This is a disaster. China's Shenzhou spacecraft, currently docked at the Tiangong space station, has been struck by space debris, sustaining major damage. The crew could now be stranded for months, maybe even up to a year, just trying to assess the situation. Things are so serious that SpaceX's Dragon capsule is already being mentioned as the safest option to bring them home, just like the rescue of Sunni and Butch earlier this year. So how did this happen, and could SpaceX really rescue them? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. At the end of April, China launched a three-person crew on the Shenzhou-20 mission to the Tiangong space station. They'd been up there for over six months, and it was finally time to wrap up their long journey and head home. So, at the end of October, China sent up a new crew aboard Shenzhou-21, which successfully docked with Tiangong on October 31st. A few days later, after handing over duties to the new team, the six astronauts celebrated together with a roast chicken cooked in the station's first-ever space oven, a moment of joy and laughter for all of them. On the morning of the 4th, they officially handed over command, and by the 5th, the three Shenzhou-20 astronauts boarded their spacecraft to prepare for the return trip. That's when ground control detected some unusual data from the system. Suspecting a collision with space debris, Beijing's control center issued an emergency order. Stop, open the hatch, return to the station. The crew had to turn back, but luckily everyone remained safe. Investigations later confirmed that the culprit was indeed space debris, likely from a defunct satellite. The irony? Just a month earlier, the same crew had spent hours outside the station on a spacewalk, installing a debris protection system. And yet, it wasn't the station that got hit, it was their own spacecraft. On November 11th, CMSA released a summary of the crew's status, stating, After the Shenzhou-20 manned spacecraft's return mission was postponed, the project team, adhering to the principle that human life and safety come first, immediately activated emergency plans and measures. They added that all ongoing work is progressing steadily and orderly according to plan. However, the statement didn't reveal exactly what went wrong or where the problem was, perhaps an attempt to protect their reputation. Faced with this situation, the Shenzhou 20 crew would have to stay on the station. It wasn't clear for how long, but for now, this would disrupt the schedule, since both crews had to remain on board together. With six astronauts instead of the usual three, the consumption of oxygen, water, and food would naturally rise. And if this lasted for months, it could become a serious problem. So China proposed two options. One was to send the Shenzhou-21 spacecraft back immediately with the new crew taking over, and the other was to call in another spacecraft for a rescue mission. As for the first option, this is the top priority. Shenzhou-21 was already docked, so the Shenzhou-20 crew could simply undock and head home immediately. But this comes with a problem. If they leave right away, the Shenzhou-21 crew loses their lifeboat, their emergency escape vehicle. They'd be left with only the Tiangong station as shelter and would have to wait eight to nine days for Shenzhou-22 to launch as a replacement. That's why there's always at least one operational spacecraft stationed at Tiangong. Plus, each crew spends about six months in orbit, giving ground control enough time to maintain and repair the spacecraft for the next rotation. Sending Shenzhou-22 immediately after Shenzhou-21 just launched would disrupt the entire control schedule and the mission plan for 2026. Complicated, right? That's why CMSA is currently focused on checking Shenzhou-21. If it's seriously damaged, it could return uncrewed. The second option is to call in help from other agencies like Roscosmos. That makes sense since China and Russia have openly partnered ever since the U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia over the Ukraine conflict. Another potential partner? SpaceX. And yes, relying on a rival and a company whose ideas China has often been accused of copying does feel a bit unusual, but it's something they'd have to accept just to deal with the situation at hand, otherwise the Tiangong schedule would be thrown off. SpaceX has the Dragon spacecraft, the safest and most advanced vehicle for launching to the ISS, and they've already rescued astronauts like Sunni and Butch before. So there's really no reason for China to hesitate if they wanted SpaceX's help. Being a private company rather than a government agency, SpaceX could mount a rescue mission as soon as China pays. The problem is, Dragon is designed to dock with the ISS according to NASA standards while Tiangong uses China's own system.
That means Dragon would need a special adapter, and installing one isn't straightforward. There's even a chance the entire docking module design would need modifications. This would take a huge amount of time, money, and effort. If China really had to go this route, they'd have to provide SpaceX with blueprints, send their engineers to modify a Dragon, and run extensive ground tests. So, while the idea of SpaceX coming to rescue China sounds good on paper, in reality, it's far from practical. Even if China turned to Roscosmos, the situation would be even less feasible. The only suitable vehicle for transporting astronauts would be the Soyuz, whose design is even more outdated than Dragon. So, for now, the best option is still to wait and analyze the fault on Shenzhou 20. If the spacecraft is seriously damaged and unsafe, the crew can ride home on Shenzhou 21, accepting that Tiangong's future schedule will be disrupted by the domino effect of this incident. But it's also a costly lesson for China, showing that Tiangong is now entering the same growing up phase that the ISS went through many years ago. The Chinese crew will gain valuable experience from this, learning how to handle similar emergencies in the future. Overall, this whole situation highlights the key difference between Tiangong and the ISS. The ISS has always been an international partnership since day one. It's been visited by a wide variety of spacecraft, Dragon, Soyuz, Progress, Starliner, Cygnus, and soon, Dream Chaser. Altogether, more than 240 missions have docked there over the past 25 years. China, on the other hand, only has Shenzhou for crew transport and Tianzhou for cargo. So, when something goes wrong, they simply don't have the same network of backup options or rescue capabilities as the ISS. In fact, incidents like this have happened plenty of times on the ISS. One of the most famous was the Soyuz MS-09 incident back in 2018. At around 3 a.m. on August 30th, the piercing wail of a pressure alarm shattered the silence aboard the ISS. Six astronauts, asleep in their sleeping bags along Harmony's passageway, woke up in a panic. Alexander Gerst, a German astronaut with ESA, was the first to float out, eyes still burning from the flashing red lights. On the central display, one number made everyone's blood run cold. The station's pressure was steadily dropping, 0.8 millimeters of mercury per hour. If they didn't find and seal the leak soon, the ISS would run out of breathable air in less than 10 days. Mission Control in Houston and Moscow both gave the same urgent command, find the leak immediately. NASA astronaut and physician Serena Onion Chancellor, together with Commander Drew Fustel, began tracing a faint hissing noise that was barely audible. They shut off all fans, floated in complete silence, and pressed their ears against the aluminum hull. Eventually, the sound led them to the orbital module of the Soyuz MS-09, the very spacecraft that would bring three of them home in just a few months. There it was, a perfectly round two-millimeter hole in the outer wall, edges jagged like it had been drilled by a bullet. Through that tiny opening, air from the ISS was hissing out into the vacuum of space. Later calculations showed that the micrometeoroid, or debris, that caused the puncture had hit at a speed of about 28,000 kilometers per hour, roughly the same as a rifle bullet fired in a vacuum. Even worse, the hole was in the orbital module, part of the spacecraft that wouldn't burn up during re-entry, but remained attached to the re-entry capsule. If that hole wasn't perfectly sealed, 2,000 degrees Celsius plasma from Earth's atmosphere could shoot straight inside like a blowtorch. Then Serena took rolls of gold captain tape, heat-resistant to 400 degrees Celsius, and layered them over the hole. Fustel injected a thick Russian epoxy sealant known as the Space Leak Patch. Commander Oleg Artemyev held them steady as they worked. Slowly, the hissing faded, then silence. The pressure drop stopped. It was only a temporary fix. Three months later, on December 6th, Russian cosmonauts Oleg Kononenko and Alexey Ovchinin performed a seven-hour, 45-minute EVA, the longest of that year. They climbed along the Soyuz MS-09 docked to the RASVET module, peeled away insulation, and applied a 0.8-millimeter titanium patch. Twelve titanium rivets, three layers of heat-resistant silicone sealant. The repair was completed at 4.12 a.m., Moscow time, exactly 99 days after the leak was found. Two weeks later, on December 20th, Alexander Gerst, Serena Aunion Chancellor, and Sergei Prokopyev boarded that same Soyuz, 
the one that had once been punctured, closed the hatch and undocked from the ISS. Three hours later, they landed safely on the snowy plains of Kazakhstan. The two millimeter hole was sealed tight. Not a single trace of plasma had entered. Later, Dmitry Rogozin, then the head of Roscosmos, publicly admitted, if that hole had been even 2.5 millimeters wide, we would never have allowed the crew to fly home and that ship luck was on our side. That incident was a stark reminder of how fragile human life can be in orbit. And now, with Shenzhou 20 facing its own crisis, that lesson feels more relevant than ever. Because in space, nothing you do ever truly disappears. On January 11, 2007, an SC-19 missile lifted off from China launch site and smashed straight into Feng Yun 1C, a 750-kilogram Chinese weather satellite orbiting 865 kilometers above Earth. In a single moment, that intact satellite shattered into more than 3,000 trackable fragments, each larger than a golf ball and an estimated 150,000 smaller pieces under one centimeter wide. All of them tore across low Earth orbit at over 10 kilometers per second. It was the single largest debris generating event in human history, one that still hasn't been surpassed to this day. The international backlash was immediate. The United States called it the most irresponsible act in the history of space. NASA confirmed that fragments from Feng Yun 1EC made up nearly 15% of all tracked objects in orbit at the time. The UK, Canada, Japan, and Australia all condemned the test. NASA debris expert Nicholas Johnson said, bluntly, this is the worst satellite breakup ever in terms of long-term space debris. China remained silent for 12 days before finally admitting to the test, insisting it wasn't targeted at any nation. But no one believed that. The consequences still linger 18 years later. Thousands of Feng Yun 1C fragments continue to drift through orbit forcing the ISS to perform more than 30 debris avoidance maneuvers over the years.